Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here again with another quick intro of our lawn and garden tips. This episode is going to be about path lighting and we're getting some great tips from FX Luminera. This is uh, audio from a video series that they had done a while back uh, with all kinds of great landscape lighting tips. So to go and actually watch those videos on YouTube, uh, just search for FX Luminera landscape lighting, tree tips, path lighting tips. There's a whole series of videos. So hope you guys enjoy these tips and thanks to Hunter Industries and FX Luminaire for providing this audio. And please send us your comments and your questions. We love hearing from you. You can email me at cal at lightingdoctor.ca or leave comments on YouTube or on our podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome to Lawn and Garden Hacks, presented by the Irrigation and Lighting Doctor, where we share all the best time and money-saving tips, tools, and ideas for all you do-it-yourself weekend warriors who want to have the best-looking home and gardens on the block and be the envy of all your neighbors. Be sure to follow the Lighting Doctor on Facebook and YouTube for more amazing lawn and garden hacks and leave your comments and questions. We love your feedback. Pathways are one of the most popular areas to install landscape lighting. Today we will talk about three types of lights to light up those paths, including up lights, down lights, and even standard path lights. Let's take a look. Wow, we're at a great day. Yeah, it's so nice today. All right, so John, tell me a little bit about this pathway and how you decided to light it. Yeah, so here we have the traditional path lighting. Okay. Uh, we're alternating from side to side. Uh, we're evenly spaced out between each path light, mm -hmm. and we're spaced about eight feet between each path light. Eight, and why eight feet on this path light? We chose eight feet to evenly, we want an even light throughout the walk. Okay. Now, uh, did the height of the riser for the path lights affect the distance in which you spaced it? It did. So we use a 12-inch mm -hmm. riser on these path lights. If we were to use the 18-inch, mm -hmm. we could probably space out the path lights a little more as it's going to put out a little more light. And what do you think that spacing would be? 10 th feet, 12 feet? I think 12 feet for the 18-inch riser would be perfect. Okay. I definitely agree. That was a good good call to bring them a little bit closer. This this sidewalk is a little bit inconsistent with the, the rock and the media intermixed with the sidewalk. So... It's definitely a good call to, to keep it on the air on the safe side for uh, for this situation. Oh, I love the colors here. This is great. Yeah, it looks looks really good. So, John, tell me about how you designed these stairs here. Well, the main staircase from the house to the pool are these stairs. Okay. They're very important yeah. to be to be illuminated. Uh, we used two different approaches. Uh, the first way we did was with the traditional path light. Okay, yeah. Uh, the traditional path lights are, are great. They put off light not only on your steps, but you're going to get the plant material mm -hmm. below the path light. Yeah. Uh, the second way is my personal favorite is we use the PB wall wash light. And what we're doing with this light is we're putting light on the boulder as well as the plant material and getting a residual light back towards the path light. Mm -hmm. that, that is my favorite way to light up, not only pathways, but stairs as well. So I'm, I'm really glad to see that you did that. Now, I, I see that you have copper path lights, uh, but they have begun the patina process. Tell me how long that took from, a, from the first installation when you had the shiny brass and copper sure. to what you see now. The patina process varies on the weather, but uh, from what we can tell in this area, it usually turns a month to a month and a half in. Okay. And to get in this darker color it's going to take maybe four to five months okay interesting that's it's, it's a beautiful look it's a very mm -hmm. natural effect right. Right. Uh, and i'm glad to see that you chose that that natural look for the path lights this is a great path yeah we thought so too when we uh, first started the design here and so our challenge here was to continue to light this path okay. but since on the rest of the site we hadn't really used path lights mm -hmm. Uh, we needed to find alternative ways of lighting this path. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, hung up a few uh, pendant lights uh, from some of these trees. And then we have some down lights as well uh, to kind of glow this path here. Yeah, that's great. I love how the, the up lights next to the trees 
are uh, really provide a lot of residual light that really light up the pathway anyway. Yeah, and, and it definitely does do that. Nice uh, little ambient glow coming off of these trees in here. Yeah, and I love how uh, path lights are probably the second most popular fixture that people use. Um, but we don't always have to use path lights. Using the pendants as you, as you did, some directional down lights. I think I see a JB up here in the top. Mm -hmm. Those are great ways to light up the pathway itself without even having to use path lights. Yeah, and, uh, and it's great that uh, we had those options to go to because uh, it was a challenge to find a way to light this path without, without the path lights. Yeah, it looks great. I love it. All right, let's, let's see what else you have. Okay. A different approach with some of the pathways and driveway lighting here. I will see a better example of it right over here. Okay. Um, as we kind of walk through this uh, entrance to this path here, we use these uh, NLs. Okay. Just kind of highlight this entrance. Oh, that's nice. You, like, you could really highlight the, the entire post as well as it probably gives you a, a really clean uh, transition of light here at the center. Yeah, you get a nice little pool of light. Makes this kind of an inviting pathway to come down. Perfect. What else do you have over here? Uh, so you can see we uh, did focus in on the driveway using those posts. So uh, we staggered uh, these posts and used the DE down lights okay. all along this area. Uh, gives nice little wash effect across the uh, driveway here. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a very wide driveway and a typical directional path light would, would not come near the length of that. So I think it's a great application to use a DE down light. It'll get you a very wide spread, and it'll be able to wash the uh, the entire pathway. So I like. I think that's a great application. Yeah, and at night it looks fantastic with the stagger, and uh, we we're really happy with the way it turned out. Nice, nice. And then here uh, also, we have these uh, boxwood globes. Uh, we wanted to do something a little different okay. just to mix up the effect a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, so we put some PBs for a nice soft wash nice. behind on this nice green wall, mm -hmm. and then kind of silhouette actually. Uh, each of these globes and that way we get kind of a different effect so we can yeah. kind of combine a few different effects here and not just always you know uplight everything and uh, kind of gives a nice silhouette of these uh, round globes well, that's nice how many uh how many pbs did you put along here or how did you know how far to space them yeah so uh we kind of toyed with back and forth what we were supposed to do on that but we ended up doing every other because there's a fair amount of them here okay. and uh we didn't want to kind of blow the homeowner away with too many lights uh just give them an example of of that effect that mm -hmm. silhouetting effect yeah that those pbs do a very a great job because they're very widespread so i could see that being a great a great application there So Mark, tell me a little bit about this site. So again, we're in a, another site here in my town. And, and it, it's a property that's very quaint and personable. And we need to look and see what FX features really would enhance this property. Okay. And so what did you choose? We, we chose PMs. Yeah. For the most part, obviously, we we're using it for, for a path light. Okay. But the, the best part about this light is it's bleeding over into the landscape beds and, mm -hmm. and highlighting the plants and even over into a decking mm -hmm. space that we have over here, too. PM is a, a unique application for lighting paths because typically on a path light, we don't want to see the source of the light. We just want to see the effect of the light, right? Correct. But in this case, we're actually making the, the bollard itself as a marker light as well. Yep. So we see the source. But my favorite part about that source, it's very diffused. It has a solid acrylic lens. And so it allows the light to bleed into a variety of different areas. So Mark, tell me about the controllability of these fixtures. Uh, all these fixtures on this side are all ZDC. Okay. So maximum amount of creativity for the homeowner. Yeah. So with the ZDC capability, do you find that the homeowner is changing the colors a lot? I do. For example, the, they don't put Christmas lights up anymore. Okay. They're able to do it by, by just changing the colors of the ZDCs. Great. You know, my favorite part about the ZDC is not only that you can change the colors for special events like Christmas or uh, special holidays or events that we're celebrating, but the fact that you could always go back to white makes the, the ZDC capabilities complementary to, to any landscape. Not very much so. So Chris, tell me what you have here. What we've got here is uh, we're standing in the lawn area. It's a, kind of a play area, gathering spot in the evenings yeah. for families and kids. Uh, transitions into a annual bed with the uh, flowers being changed out several times throughout the year. And then we've got a fountain there behind us as well. Okay, so, <laughs> so why did you use path lights in this area? We chose path lights for two reasons. We wanted to create a barrier at night to separate this area from the, the planting and the fountains so mm -hmm. that parents could see their kids if they started to run this way. Yeah. We also wanted to illuminate. They pay a lot of money to get these flowers put in several times throughout the year. So we wanted to go ahead and make sure that those were illuminated as well. Now I noticed with the path lights you used a, a higher riser. Why so? Uh, we chose the 18s over the standard 12 because we wanted to get more light output, throw further into the bed and throw further out onto the, the uh, mm -hmm. grass here. Just 
more of a safety feature going okay. up higher, getting more light out here because it is a public place. Okay. And with the uh, with the higher riser and the the wider throw, how often were you able to space them? Uh, about we went about ten feet here. Um, general recommendation, whatever your linear length is, divide that by your number of fixtures and just make sure that there's an even pattern of light. Okay. Perfect. Well, Ryan, this final area here, we uh, we're trying to get some light over to the gates. Just uh -huh. to kind of make people aware of the entrance way into the pool. Yeah. Um, we had a couple choices here. We could have used some path lights, but we decided to go with the FC ground wash. This is unique. It's low profile. It's not going to get kicked or bumped, broken. Uh, with path lights, you got a lot of kids and families coming through here with pool toys. Mm -hmm. um, path lights we thought would get destroyed and knocked over. Well, what I like about the fixture is it's very unobtrusive. It's out of the way. Most people wouldn't even see that it's there during the day. And the light source is really hidden at night. That's true, they don't see it during the day, but at night it does a really nice cast of light right across this hardscape. But uh, this worked perfect for the application. Let's recap some pathlight fundamentals. Traditionally, pathways are designed with pathlights. Stagger the placement of each fixture for a classic look or align them evenly for a more modern look. Since pathlights are usually installed to enhance nighttime safety for pedestrians, spacing should be consistent along the entire path. When you have a tree or structure above the pathway, use downlights to bring a natural light to the area without drawing attention to the fixtures. If you have a high traffic area and you can't use down lights or path lights, FX Luminaire also has in-grade lights and wall lights that wash the path. FX Luminaire has many traditional and contemporary fixtures to help you better match those fixtures to your landscape. I hope you've learned some new techniques for lighting up those paths. For more information, go to fxl.com. Hey guys, thanks for listening and be sure to follow The Lighting Doctor on Facebook and YouTube for more amazing lawn and garden hacks. And leave your comments and questions. We love your feedback and look forward to talking with you again real soon. Have a great week. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.